I think we're going to see a longer match between these two players. Uh, but man, Hasegawa's deck for the first Pro Tour, yeah. really good deck. <laughs> That's really some good powerful deck. cards in that deck indeed. Well, it's time for round number two here in the building. I'm going to toss it on over to Ailey Loney and Corey Baumeister. Thank you so much, Maria. I saw two Ezrams and I went, <gasps> what a blessing for a first Pro Tour draft. Can you believe that, Corey? No kidding. Yeah, that's exactly what you want to get. See that in pack one? Ooh, I know exactly what I want in pack two. Another one of those. Oh, so yeah, really impressive. Christmas came early or late, I guess, as yeah. the case may be for <laughs> this matchup. <laughs> we did see, unfortunately, uh, Jean-Emmanuel Dupra, our reigning world champion, go down a game to Ben Stark. Yep. But not all is lost. It is obviously, you know, the more you win, the better at these yep. uh, Pro Tour events. But don't count the champ out, man. Absolutely. Yeah, we're going to see if uh, this kind of more defensive strategy that John emmanuel has been so adamant about is really kind of paying off. You know, the one thing that JD has going is, well, you know, JD's opponent doesn't really have the most aggressive deck either. So this is going to be a very, very grindy, grindy match here. And that's something that John emmanuel Dupra said he's preferred about this format. Yeah. He doesn't think it's as fast as everyone believes it is. So if it is a grindier matchup, it's kind of his ball game. You know, he yeah. wants to be right here. Absolutely. And whenever John Emmanuel Dupra has more time to play a game <laughs> of Magic, every turn that goes by, you slowly start to favor him a little bit more. If I'm playing against JED and we get to turn 10, I feel like I am going to lose. <laughs> so. I hear you there. Surveil lands to kick things off here for both players, Dupra versus Hasegawa at the top of your screen. Both down a game or down a match, as we mentioned, but uh, still everything to fight for here. Let's see how they can continue their limited rounds here at the Pro Tour. Thinking cap to start things off. Now we need some detectives to uh, affix that cap to. Yeah, there you go. Thinking cap, not a card that we see a ton of, but in the blue-white strategy where there's yeah. your entire deck is detectives, the card can be pretty strong. And, oh, you yeah. know, we see a lot more defensive creatures as well in Hasegawa's list. Ooh, nice. Private Eye coming on down. Yes, That's excellent. a detective. Won't be able to uh, equip it just yet, but does buff all of the other detectives. Deduce getting a clue here for Jean-Emmanuel Dupra. And let's keep digging, hopefully finding all the colors we need to get a big old dragon down. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see it do all that much in the last matchup, so I want to see some dragons burning cities down, man. Yeah, absolutely. That card is just so incredible. If you can ever connect with it, the game just ends. You know, you just get to pretty much say this is game over, as there's plenty of time by that stage of the game to collect evidence and, and really get it going. That is the one thing I really like about JED's deck, is you have all these ways to collect evidence mm -hmm. and make Bite Down on Crime a really, really powerful yeah. card, um, where if you don't have a deck that's set up for that, the four mana bite ability is usually mm. not that impactful. You know, it's just okay. But if you can make that card two mana, it becomes one of the more premium removal spells here. And green really needs the help oh, in yeah. the premium removal slot. Yeah. And knowing that game plan, you know, in his draft uh, stage, getting those cease and desists, all of those cards that have yeah. multi sides, you know, that all adds to the cost of the collecting evidence. So. Yep. You know, yep. utilizing the tools at his disposal for sure. And also a pretty decent start here for both players, but the Gryffindor Tracker in the sky might shift things a little bit more into Hasegawa's territory. Yeah, absolutely. And we're getting close to five mana here for Hasegawa, and that <laughs> has just got to be screaming, do you have one of these Ezrims uh, oh, geez, to really yeah. just start pulling ahead? Now we see the Thinking Cap get a quick equipped to Private Eye, uh, definitely signifying that it is not there. Plus the out cold to ice it down a little bit nice. here. But you know, the really early game uh, uh, ice downs, mm -hmm. you know, are just okay. You really want it, or excuse me, the really early out colds are just okay. You really want to have a board presence and then tap down the creature so then you can kind of pu start pulling ahead. But Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, usually you want that four mana slot nope. to deal with that private eye permanently, <laughs> um, but not really in the cards here for JED. Not at the moment. Does stay with some damage. The cold case cracker, though, joining the fray here. So these flyers are going to get out of hand, and that is also a detective. So a 4-4 four -four in the air alongside another four-powered creature. That is a very quick clock here for oh, Shoichi absolutely. Hasegawa. Absolutely. There goes the disguised creature coming in. This format, it is really tough to block these disguised creatures. Yeah. It makes it a lot easier in an open deckless tournament, but you know, if you're playing on the ladder on arena or something like that, you just always think it's the worst possible creature <laughs> to flip up and, and make you, your life a little bit tougher. All right, stun counters off. Next turn, they will untap if they're still hanging out on the board here for Hasegawa. 
Where is Ezrim? And that was a very interesting thing here to pick up on John Emanuel's play. That was a post-combat creature. You know, this mm -hmm. was this was the post-combat evidence examiner. Normally you want to play that early, especially with a four drop in your yard. That would scream to me if I'm sitting across from him. This is something like a undercover crocodile underneath there where you yeah. wanted to have the ability to uh, have all five mana to flip it open. Yeah, another flyer attempting to land here defenestrated Phantom. That is rough indeed, but repulsive mutation on the oh. stack here for Jean Emmanuel, going to buff up one of the creatures, unable to pay the cost. So one flyer, less to deal with, but still two hanging out in the air there. That card is always such a blowout whenever yeah. you get both modes. We saw JED win a game yeah. by just pumping earlier against Ben Stark. Uh, didn't sweet. win the last two, but whenever you get the counterspell mode attached to it, <laughs> it just is such a beating. Oh, yeah. There's quite a few Summit cards where they land or they, they resolve in a matchup and you're just like, oh, no. Look yes. at you, doppelgang. <laughs> yeah, that oh my. killed me my. so many times. So many times. Eight mana, doppelgang, <sighs> shake the hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, GG's. Okay, cool, bye. <laughs> Not a fun at all to face up against that. So where does Johnny Manuel go from here? He has the Evidence Examiner, which is doing good work for him. Is going to run out of stuff to exile though pretty quickly. Yep, and I bet this is a crocodile. It just yeah. okay, oh. another five mana one. A fender you know. at large. Yeah, still a decent amount of damage and giving the buff. Yep, definitely played like that was the case last turn uh, with the ability to flip it up into that four four blocker. But you know there is the flip side of that that you could kind of bluff that scenario, thinking, well. This attack would only make sense. You know I have disguised creatures that flip up for five, yeah. so you can kind of play these mind games. <laughs> one of the things I absolutely love about this limited format is one of my favorites. I, yeah. I absolutely love it. It's almost like the format where it's like, I don't feel like I should be blocking because there's also yeah. so many combat tricks. I mean, the more, oh, excuse me, the disguised creatures in and of themselves mm -hmm. are combat tricks. Yep. For the most part, you know, you know, there's the odd one four floating around here and there, but there's Ezrim. Woo! Talk about a bomb. Here is. One of them. Yeah, and now, you Ooh, know, boy. down to one. JED mm. is definitely not going to survive the next turn, uh -uh. so it's all up to JED to clear out this blocker and try to get in there. So maybe a bit of a aggressive all-in attack here if JED were to have one way to wow. move that blocker out of the way. Well, let's now, of course, the deck. let's see if he has anything that could it, get him through. Here. I mean, yeah, the ability on Ezrem with two mana open, it's very tough to push through. Yeah. Exit Specialist could be an option here with the mana he has available. Oh, that's not a good sign. No, if we are digging, this is not good for our reigning world champion in this matchup. Yeah, and one piece of removal, even two pieces of removal is not going to do it. You really got to have something tricky to get through that uh, that, uh, that ability to give it yeah. that proof. Yeah, I mean, there's unless there's a sacrifice effect, I don't think we picked up any of those for John Emanuel, though. So. Yeah. I don't know. John Emanuel picked up cards of every color uh, in that draft, yeah, so I'm sure, sure we yeah. have we have <laughs> some extracted confession here somewhere. Oh man, that that I think <laughs> would be the only thing to get him through this. Yeah, and now this kind of still forces a block. It does. You're yeah. attacking. You're pumping it. That's seven power, and uh, just passing priority there from Hasegawa, that was really smart. If you get into a situation where you try to give it lifelink, you know, and then a removal spell comes over, then you're in a little, a little bit of trouble. And I think just passing priority there makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Well, that's gonna do it for game number one. Pretty uh, easy matchup, I'd say, there for the Esper agents, the detective agency getting their head on the board in the form of Ezrim, and, you know, just wrapping up that case quick as yeah. that. Yeah, Hasegawa's deck looks really, really nice. Yeah. You have Tasa as well, plus just a lot of late game bombs, some early stuff. You know, both of these players are 0-1, so things didn't go well the first round, but really, really love Hasegawa's deck. Yeah. It's kind of like the ideal place you want to be if you're playing the detective strategy. It's like, yeah. oh, cool, too. Ezrem is a private eye. You got a bunch of, you know, equipment that go with that. He's got a projector mm -hmm. inspector in there, too. You know, just some really, really solid cards in all of his yeah. his, his his list here. So Lacking, you know, um, a little bit of removal, mm -hmm. I would say, is the one thing. 
you know, no bindings, anything like that, to be able to just have some clean ways to deal with stuff. But Crime Stopper Sprite, just being able to lock down yeah. cards in this tempo style Azorius deck is usually enough. Oh, yeah. You know? Talk about tempo inside source, creating the oh, detective. No. Oh, no, indeed. Just discard to hand size. Oh, wow. man. In for three here. Come the critters, excuse me, four, along with the private eye, giving yep. that buff there to the detective. Yeah, not the start JD is looking for here, as this is just going to be really, really tough oh, to come back. Boy. Yeah. Unauthorized exit getting rid of the tokens, so don't have to worry about the three power there, but still, this is not looking good. Yeah, and you, I mean, that's best possible on turn two from JD's yeah. deck. There's not a lot of two mana removal spells that he has, so being able to kill a creature and surveil likely a land to the top yeah. is definitely a good start. But we need, really need uh, Hasegawa to really not have any more action. And even one disguised creature here yeah. could be too much for JD. So we assume that the top of the library there is a land. It is. There's a mountain, and there's a disguised creature. Jeez. And Jean Emmanuel talking about being on the defensive or trying to play the defensive game. He's forced to in this situation. He's not even able to defend in a way that he would have profitable, you know? Yep, 100%. And I did see that beautiful five drop in hand. Oh. And there it is. Oh, yep. And <laughs> as the guy was just slamming on, he's like, I don't need protection for this thing. What are you going to do against this? Yeah, like most of the removal JD could play, like, yeah, maybe you get, you can't even really do a bite down on crime. Like, there's no real removal spell this early in the game that can deal with it with JD stumbling uh, so yeah. early on. Oh, this is so rough. But yeah, when I saw this deck list for Hasegawa, I was like, how do you beat that? Yeah. It is just really <laughs> the story of a very smooth, consistent yeah. deck versus, you know, JD has a lot of power, but it is a little bit all over the place there. Yeah. You know, you need your mana to agree with you. So if you get in these situations where you're behind on the battlefield, JD's deck just doesn't have that way to claw back mm -mm. that easily. Not at all. So shuffling up here, Jean Emmanuel looking at the options. Gotta be Checking a bite his down pace on private notes. eye. Yeah, something. Gotta be. And I don't even know if that's enough, but that's gotta be step one. And I did see it in hand for JD, so I think it's a little bit of a maybe. Can I still stay alive yeah. here? Like I'm winning. But <laughs> oh, yeah, bounce the card that lets you draw two more cards over time. Usually not the best value play, but... Oh, boy. It buys him a turn. Yeah. Okay, and there is four more damage coming in. Down to three, and if Hasegawa has just another land to protect this powerful flyer, it would already be too much. But yeah. <laughs> even if he doesn't have the land, that means he just has gas in hand, so... Yeah, JD is in for it. Yep, and there is the handshake. Open and shut case, that one was, huh, yeah. Corey? Yeah. Good grief. Very, very open and shut there. Yeah, that's a clean whistle, clean way there for uh, Shoichi Hasegawa to you know, get back into this one and one at the moment. For Jean yeah. Emmanuel fans, unfortunately, our reigning world champ is 0 and 2 in the limited yeah. portion. Yeah, not you know, where you want to be. not where you want to be for sure, you know, especially after winning the last tournament, you know, but if anybody is able to come back from a situation like this, it's John Emmanuel Dupra. Oh, He's yeah. not going to go into round three being like, well, that's my pro tour, you know, <laughs> this <laughs> is definitely all, no. someone that, yeah, maybe you get your losses early, but you can still finish 6-2, a very respectable record, and uh, I'm sure we'll still see him in day two. For sure. We got <laughs> some more magic for you after the break. We'll be back with our second feature match after this.
Welcome back to Pro Tour Murders at Karlov Manor from Chicago, Illinois. I'm Ailey Loney and I have Corey Baumeister with me in the booth. It is round number two and we have seen some pretty quick games of Magic yeah. just before the break. But uh, we're going to jump in now to another match for you, friends, where it is Derek Davis up against Ben Stark. These players are 1-0, and o, fighting for the pod win, as it yep. were, in the next round for whoever wins this matchup. So Derek Davis, top aided last year, is looking to continue and improve upon that record. And Ben Stark, one of, of the most well-known and respected limited players yep. in Magic. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Derek Davis, very famously known for bursting on the scene oh, a year yeah. ago at this time, beating Shota yeah. in the top eight with that Enigmatic Fires deck. So since then, he has put up quite the career to still already be, you know, qualified for a few pro tours here. Yeah. He's impressed me a lot. And you know what else has impressed me about mm -hmm. Derek Davis? His really nice Boros limited deck we yeah. got here. Run, wonder where those lightning helixes went late. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, Derek uh, has one of those as well as just a really, really solid deck here. Yeah, this deck is very cool indeed. That yeah. Goblin Mask Maker getting shocked. I love yes. the flavor text on that shock. It turns out could not, in fact, handle the truth. <laughs> it's there we just go. so good. That's one of the best lines. And it's one of the best plays. Being on the draw and shocking one of these cards, especially mm -hmm. another one drop, you know, maybe Novice Inspector, you don't necessarily want to shock, but look at how fast and how much action is happening right here. Shock to be able to really stop these turn two disguises from Ben is really huge. You can't yeah. really emphasize enough how important these early plays are in this format. Yeah, repeat offender down on the board along with a disguise creature for Ben Stark. Disguise number one, as he shall heretoforth be known. <laughs> Getting in for two points of damage, unless Ben doesn't care too much about what's under the hood there, but we'll take two points of damage and following up here, we'll get disguise number three. Please, disguise number one was my father. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. oh, Corey, never change. <laughs> and a lot of the oh, disguises... Oh, Massacre Girl, let's oh, go! Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I like this card, can you tell? Oh, I, that card is absolutely Ooh. incredible. One of the best, you know, rares, mythics in this entire set. Oh, bringing back an old mechanic in Wither, so if you block your stuff is getting small. It's yep. going to get real teeny tiny. So this makes blocking incredibly difficult. If it doesn't just outright kill your creature, it's definitely handicapping it. Exactly. And I don't even think that's the best line of text no, on it's Massacre not. Girl. It's being, not. <laughs> being able to draw a card every time you put a creature oh. into the graveyard uh, really helps. So here is a dog walker. Derek Davis has two dog walkers uh -huh. as well as a crowd control warden mm -hmm. for the disguised creature and sanguine savior. So not a lot of diversity as far as the disguised creatures. Yeah. Um, yep, yep, but still some some really solid ones. Yeah, it does have a concealed weapon hiding out. Uh, yep. you know, that could that could pretend to be a critter. There is yep. the form familiar he's playing to, which we don't see very often. Yeah. But uh, that pyrotechnic performer, if we can get that in conjunction with the other disguised critters, then we could see some cannons blasting Ben Stark off of this board. Yeah, absolutely. And as I look at this list more, there are a ton of disguised creatures. <laughs> so it is it is near impossible for Ben to get a good idea of which ones these yeah. are, as Pick. there is just a ton. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Fenrir Lodge with a pyrotechnic performer? That's gross. Yeah, pyro <laughs> pyrotechnic performer is just really, really a powerful card. Something that, you know, it's an aggressive red drop that yeah. you don't really need to attack with to close out the game. Like, that card can just sit back and demand an, an actual removal spell answer yeah. to deal with it. So, oh, yeah. Gross. And then Crowd Control Warden, too. That's even bigger if mm. this crit is on the board. Oh, yeah. this deck is gross. I like it. But not a lot of clean answers for Massacre Girl. No. You know, there is, <laughs> there's Shock, there's Lightning Helix, there's Case of the Gateway Express. That's probably yeah, going to be the best be answer if, if Derek can get one more creature. And the thing with that, though, is when you target another creature with it, if Ben were to remove a creature, you know, then it, it, it doesn't work. Yeah. So it needs these creatures in abundance yeah. to be able to get them to fire off. But Krenko now, too. Oh, man. Just rare after rare here for one <laughs> Benjamin Stark, and now the menacing Massacre Girl swinging in here with Krenka, who has haste, and disguise number two. So what is Derek Davis going to do? Yeah, it's brutal because you pretty much have to take the seven damage from Massacre Girl and Krenko, otherwise yeah. you're chump blocking here. So it's do you want to jump into that disguise too? And with, you know, the way that Ben tapped with having two mountains open, you probably uh, are flipping it up to get a flyer 
the gadget technician, that would be where my head yeah. would be going at. Um, so it's just, does Derek like the disguise enough to trade with a 3-2, where Ben also gets to leave behind a 1-1? Yeah. Not great. And, uh, yeah, if that was a gadget technician with the wither, <laughs> Massacre Girl would trigger and you'd draw a card as well. Oh, yeah. Man, it's just such a tricky <laughs> game with Massacre Girl on the board because yeah. every death now gives Ben Stark even more benefit than just having one of your creatures removed. Yep. And now only two cards in hand for Derek, wildly behind on the battlefield. It's going to be a tricky one. Even if the Dog Walker gets in there, you know, if uh, <laughs> it, it gets blocked, that's another card for Ben. There's yeah. just so many bad case scenarios here. On the job, one time. Yeah. I don't know. Is that something that we can do here? Even if it is the Gadget Technician, that's two blockers. But yeah, it just looks like he's, he's jamming. Yep. In and the red zone, let's go. Not jamming with everything, so that's definitely leading me to believe that Derek does not have any way to push through lethal damage here. So Derek's trying to do a conservative attack yeah. to get some in while trying to block and ideally taking down Massacre Girl before you can any before you can really start trying to mass take care of these creatures. Yeah. So leaving some blockers back, he does have a couple instances of life gain in the deck that we've seen. We saw the Lightning Helix uh, available to him, got the Crovod Haunch. could we do here to just stem the bleeding a little bit well, that's pretty much it yeah so here is the attack what is Ben Stark gonna do does he care about it at all because this isn't threatening lethal with a on the job is it that's three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve okay it'd be close yeah it's tempting I would be really uh, tempted to put that re repeat offender at least in yeah. front of the dog walker because that eliminates a blocker on Ben's turn when Ben plans to attack in, plus nets Ben a card. Yeah. So that's the one that I would really kind of snap off here. Now, if it is a gadget technician as well, which it looks like here it is, um, you can also you know throw that token in front of the dog token or something, but I don't think you really need to do that. And there's some thought to Ben just not blocking here and trying to you know, crack back for lethal next turn. We are looking for one toughness things or less to die from Massacre Girl. Mm -hmm. So the temptation would be there for an extra card. Yep. Yeah, because it's multiples. It's not just win one or more. Mmm, cards. We like cards. Yeah. We're magic players. Give, give, give. <laughs> yes, yes. Unlimited power. There we go. All righty. So jumping in the way there of the pupper. Ben Stark, you monster. I'm mm. sure everyone is thinking, how dare you kill the gorgeous puppy? <laughs> Those are some uh, adorable tokens, oh, I must are. say. Yeah. Goodness me. See you. Yep, two cards drawn here for Ben, two critters down. What's the follow up here for Derek Davis? Tapping three, is this another disguise critter coming on out? Sure is. Okay, this is going to be a big attack coming back at Derek, though. Oh, yeah. This is going to hurt because there is menacing attack there from Massacre Girl herself, the 3 2, and then Krenko, who's a 3 3. Yeah, I think something like the one of Lightning Helix for Derek Davis, you know, such an incredible removal spell. Looks like that was connecting the dots. Um, yeah, that does nothing really. Yeah, right connecting now. dots not doing anything. But just a helix to be able to like kill a creature mm. if Ben were to attack all and then maybe be able to a attack back would be something Derek would need. But without that, you just got to get into combat here. Hope one of these creatures you have uh, can maybe take out Massacre Girl. But yeah, I either way you slice it, Derek's in a lot of trouble here. Disguise numbers four and five. Might be on Massacre Girl duty here. No, oh, no. All right, we're gonna kill kill off the other two. Okay. 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 So just a chump block with a puppy. So this is just looking to go to one, hope yeah. to find a way to crack it back. Oh, okay. sneaky. Okay, <laughs> I like that a lot. There's the concealed weapon we mentioned earlier. So that's gonna equip. Onto the puppy, perhaps, to kill Krenko? No, oh, this, is, no. this is Derek Davis <gasps> saying, I want to I want win, win the game. Yeah. yeah. That prevents <laughs> a card as well, because the disguised creature dying to the technician would have triggered Massacre Girl as well. So concealed weapon, very flavorful yeah. and really powerful as well. I absolutely love that one. Oh, man, that's cool. <laughs> very neat play there from Derek Davis. 
I'm just waiting for like a shock to the face or something to finish things off here. Yeah. But the pass, the turn passes back here to Derek Davis. What is the draw? Can he close this out? There is a disguised creature in the way there. Can he deal 11 damage through that? It's going to be tough. Something like Lightning Helix to get the creature out of the way. You know, that's probably not even enough here. With that other card being connecting the dots, like I think I saw there yeah. from Derek Davis, I don't think it's really possible. Yeah, but I mean, we shall see. With a couple disguised creatures, you know, you never know. Yeah. It could be anything. It could even be a boat. <laughs> There's no boats in the set, though, so. If only. Not that. So disguise number three has the plus three O, oh, but it's not enough. That is a repeat offender. That was a lot of damage that he had coming through there. That's why I had to look in there. <laughs> OK. <laughs> there we go. It's a nice foil one, so I wanted to get that copy. <laughs> that was the crowd control warden. So, I mean, you know, that is a card that can really do a lot of damage, yeah. but uh, you do need to go wide. But Derek Davis's deck does go quite wide uh, normally, but uh, not the case there. Well, let's jump into game number two here. Both of these players looking to remain undefeated and go into round number three to play for the pod. Kicking things off here with the surveil land from Derek Davis's side of things. An on-color surveil land. How lucky. Mm -hmm. That's the dream right there. These surveil lands are so cool, by the yeah, way. I love Making them. a big impact in so many different formats. It's great. I mean, this set overall, you know, Mirrors of Call of Mana has been really impactful in many formats. You're yep. going to see a bunch of it in Pioneer later today. So For sure. Yeah, if you're looking forward to the constructed portion of this, we'll be there pretty quick. So. And here was that play that we saw the flip side of mm -hmm. game one. Shock on the draw from Ben to the two drop here. <laughs> you know, Der that put Derek really far ahead in that scenario. And this puts oh. Ben really far ahead in this scenario with a Kranko coming in to deal three damage this early in the game. Oh, man. Kranko has so many cool interactions in this set. Yeah. If you're playing the Izzet version of the of the deck, mm -hmm. where you can get with the Detective Satchel and then just start making things and sacking things and getting mana. Oh, it's, Ooh, it's there we go. I love That's it spicy. So oh, but he's dead now. Because Dog Walker. Oh, yeah. Dog <laughs> Walker. Sick of boy. Into Case of the Gateway Express. <laughs> Case of the Gateway Express. White's my favorite color to draft in this format, and that is my absolute favorite uncommon. Nice. Just incredible. Just a great removal spell because your deck already wants to go wide with a bunch mm -hmm. of Dog Walkers and stuff like that. But then having a kind of glorious anthem here, yeah. being able to pump your team. Uh, late in the game just ends up being so devastating to play against. Yeah, when this flips, <laughs> that entire team is going to have skipped leg yeah. day because it's just all power. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and we're probably going to see it this turn. You know, Ben will have to wait in combat here and kill this dog walker now um, just to stop this case from being solved right Slice. now. Slice, squish, <laughs> from the shadow. But it can easily get solved next turn. And having to deal with a creature every single turn from Ben is not very feasible. Because he's got some removal, but not an absolute yeah. ton. And generally, you want to be playing more creatures than you're playing removal. But sometimes, yeah. you know, the cards that come to you, it's just like, oh, I'm going to kill everything. Yep. And then hopefully win out the game with a Massacre Girl, perhaps. Yeah, I think the, the old Massacre Girl here would be great <laughs> for Ben. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> deal with the battlefield cleanly. Oh, but Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, those cards are so cool. <laughs> I actually remember playing that in uh, the, I think it was, what, Ravnica Legions or whichever one it was, at a pre-release, and it was gross. Yeah, I yeah, that card so was much. incredible. Ooh, a deadly complication here, however, as, oh, far from oh. you kill the cat and the dog. The, the value there, being able to return that case for a later removal spell, mm. if you're for sure not going to yeah. flip it here, yeah, it, absolutely incredible. I'm mad about the cat, but you know what? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of cool combos with that cat as well oh, yeah. in this format. It's sweet. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't like it, but you know, I find it pretty useful if you're playing a more slower, grindy game. Yep. I'm a fan of the, with it with the three mana blue enchantment that taps down their creature. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can pay two to shuffle it back with that ability on the stack, flip oh, it up yeah, and return can, it. Yeah. yeah, that's my favorite play with that one. Really nice. I forget the name of the enchantment in Theros, but you do that too. With yep. this dreadful apathy. Yep. You know, you'd activate it, then bounce it back and be like, aha, still got all of these. Yes. <laughs> that's sweet. Okay, so another disguised creature for Derek for Derek with that case in hand. So you can kill this repeat offender and 
be able to solve the case here. And yeah. with three creatures in play, there's no way Ben can disrupt that. So putting that creature out there, Ben has to kind of have a plan because this is pretty face-up information here, and it mm -hmm. seems like a slam dunk play. Yep, that's well, definitely going to kill that. There go the critters. So in for four damage, and the case will be solved at the end step. And that at the end step is the most important thing. Yeah. If that got solved, you know, in, in combat, combat, it would yeah. be so good. This is basically like playing fuss, you know? Yep. Yep. <laughs> Ooh, Micro Watch Phantom. Oh, it's so okay. shiny. Look at him. I like this card, too. This is probably one of my favorite commons. Premium common yeah. in, in the best color. Absolutely <laughs> an incredible card. Oof. That card is also city extremely good. Yeah, I got nothing to do though. It's just a three-three at this point. Yeah, you want to pair it with something, and and Ben does have a decent amount of stuff to pair it with. Um, you know, there's a puzzle knot in there as a little bit of a flashback, as mm -hmm, well as mm -hmm. just uh, some clues and stuff like that. But just a five mana three-three here is not it, and this is looking like a uh, clean victory here for Derek, as long as he's got some nice follow-ups here. Oh, for sure. Oh, man. Auspicious arrival on the Sanguine Savior, too. So, a yep. little bit of extra yeah. life gain. Not like he needs it right now. He is yeah, certainly that's lethal. Beat down. That's lethal right there. <laughs> that's nine damage coming in with four power from the dog and then yep. five from the flyer here. Unless Ben does have one toxin analysis, which mm -hmm. could uh, prevent this. Okay. There it is. Oh, yeah. We play on You're for cool. probably one more turn. Yeah, probably one more turn. <laughs> no uh, sweepers or anything of that sort uh, for Ben Stark, it yep. looks like. Uh, five, seven, three, four, five. Yeah, ten. Minus three. Minus three yeah. So, yeah. yep, down to two. two. Yep. I gain four. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Twenty-one. Five. Oh, yes, yeah, five. Sorry. Uh, Twenty-two. All right, seconds. let's see if Ben Stark has anything left up his sleeve here. Is it Lightning Helix? Uh, that'd be cool. <laughs> are you going to do it, or do I get to do it? You would definitely get to, yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> Just let me warm up my vocal cords for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big moment to live up to, oh, though, boy. if it happens. Yeah. So cool. <laughs> <laughs> Five mana. Here comes okay, there's the second one. Under City Eliminator. OK. So now Ben is dead to a two-power creature. Yeah, just being able to uh, lift up that Market Watch Phantom. But the case does not interact with that profitably. If you True. play a 2-2, it is a 3-2. So it does not give it flying. That's a little bit of a disadvantage here. But if you were to be able to flip down a Dog Walker, then flip it up, yeah. then the dogs would trigger uh, the Phantom here. So it's Derek's awesome. not slamming anything here. So wow, we might we might still have a game. We need a one drop is what you're telling me. Oh, yes. power. Hey, Kitty, you got any friends? No, nope, just the one. <laughs> Novice Inspector would uh, also yep. do it here. Reckless Detective, but wow, wow. just a pass. Ugh, Is Ben clawing great. back into this? Uh, he might be. Wow. I got six power on the board. He's doing a good job blocking the ground critters right now. Yeah, and Ooh, Derek's getting in there. Okay. Derek thought this game was over with that, like, very yeah. aggressive, auspicious um, arrival. Yeah. yeah, auspicious arrival. Maybe a little bit premature to cast that, not really thinking about the one of. Um, yeah, toxin analysis. analysis, yeah. So here is a lethal attack coming in. Oh, murder! <laughs> Most foul. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> that was very dramatic, thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, you, know, you know, Corey, I heard murder was bad. Not, you know, <laughs> not so bad in this scenario. <laughs> yeah. when, when, it, when it works, it's, it's pretty good. It's, yeah. it's still good. <laughs> So this was not the best exchange for Derek, you know? Mm -mm, not Derek's at all. two creatures turned into one, three, two. You know, Ben had to have the murder to make sure it wasn't just lethal there, but Ben wasn't going to attack with that creature if, uh, you know, he didn't have it. So. Yeah. Felonious Rage able to keep a crit on the board. Auspicious Arrival jumping in to save the critter. So only the Undercity Eliminator dies in this instance. Okay. What you got, Ben? Okay. Love this card Case as well. Of the burning masks deals three damage. Gonna kill that detective. Get that off the board, man. This game has has got interesting. Yeah, but Ben clearly doesn't have too much going on here, so any creature is just gonna be very scary from Derek. But might not have anything here. Yeah, and that case is so difficult to flip when you're on the back foot. Yeah, Derek does have both a shock and lightning helix here for the just straight GG. And if Ben is not pressuring. You know, eventually Derek will find yeah. this. Okay, there's a little bit of pressure, not a lot. Yeah. 
little novelist. Wait, is that a Marker Watch fan? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is, that is also a foil. That, that is the best Marker yeah. fan, Market Watch uh, Phantom I have ever nice. seen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there we go. Derek was really just getting all these shiny ones for his personal collection, I think. <laughs> oh, goodness me. So the crime novelist is doing its best. Yeah, not the best here for sure, but... And it's just it's just real small at this point. Yeah. And now we have a disguised creature, so it's looking okay there for Ben right now. Yeah, not Derek a card Davis I Derek Davis needs a one-power creature. Yep. This case is really you know, kicking its butt a little bit. Yeah. He really hasn't had any creature, though, to be fair. Yeah. But yeah, one... Uh, a lot of outs to just win the game right now from Derek and force this into a game three. Because we haven't seen the shock or the lightning here. Nope, yet, nope, no. yep. Pyrotechnic performer got knocked out way yeah. early, so that's not an option. No cornered crooks in the deck. <laughs> Vengeful Dracker and hope Ben oh, sacrificing there. something. There it is. There <laughs> is the one power hey, creature. Novice Inspector, that's going to join the fray here in the air for two. Does okay. Ben have an answer? <laughs> Flippity flop? Nope. Nope. GG. Didn't even get the clue from Novice Inspector there at the end. <laughs> that could have really backfired if Ben did have a removal spell there. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, well, tied up the game. 1-1. Yep. One, one. All right, big game here. Being able to go into that last round, even if you end up being 2-1. 2-1 at your first draft of the Pro Tour, you yeah. feel pretty good. 3-0, of course, you feel on top of the world. So I'm so I'm told, yeah. of course. You know, I don't know if I've, uh, that's actually <laughs> happened to me, but... <laughs> So this is a really big game for these players and hey. almost the best one drop. I thought yeah. we had Novice Inspector to start no, this off. No, just, just a leg of whatever a crowbot is. <laughs> I imagine it's some form of ox. Yes. I really like that card. The flavor behind it yeah. is so cool. Yeah, and if you can just, you know, sacrifice mm -hmm. an artifact um, and then pay the two, yeah. you know, even if you don't sacrifice itself to gain life, like there's plenty of ways to just get rid of an artifact where that card can synergize quite well. Yeah, and can. just really good with all the dogs, the dog walkers create and stuff like oh, that. Yeah. The puzzle knot out there. Puzzle no. knot, yep. And vengeful tracker, and yeah, these early stages of the game are so important in Murders of Karlov Manor as you just really need to be on the battlefield in the first three turns pretty yeah. consistently. Um, to, to kind of start the game, you know, if your opponent goes one drop, two drop, three drop, and you don't play anything until turn four, <laughs> you don't even really get to play the game. Um, but if you guys each go back and forth yeah. and, and get a couple plays in, uh, then it's just starting it all over. I believe it goes one drop, two drop, three drop, dead. Yes, yeah? yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> disguise creature, see if that is, you know, one this of the better a... disguise creature, I would say dog walker is probably the ideal one you want to start yeah. with. This is a great start here for Derek Davis. This yeah. list is this is pretty much what you want to see from it. You know, barring Novice Inspector uh, as the first <laughs> play would be pretty darn good. Yep. Slice from the shadows, getting rid of the cat again. Yep, no dogs, only cats this time. <sighs> okay, all right. Well, you know, maybe he's sandbagging it for yeah. for the big swing when he needs it. But Derek, yeah. Derek's pretty happy about that, you know, like, and, and I think Ben will be a little disappointed because the cat is not great here, especially yeah. with Derek missing some land drops, um, but the dog walker would be excellent might see it soon if disguise number one is in fact a dog walker mm. this looks like it was brought in here from ben just needed a three six body uh to be able to get it in there not really going to use the ability of sacrificing it to draw any cards or anything like that but just a three six blocker yeah. against Derek davis's much more aggressive deck and i would say mm -hmm. just overall better deck than ben stark here yeah if agency card is able to sacrifice one of the uh Suspected creatures, getting two cards off of it. Yeah. That's pretty neat. Six mana? Low price of six mana. You yeah. gotta suspect that repeat offender and get rid of it. <laughs> Probably not the ideal play. This is a big attack, Ooh. saying a lot, attacking into a 3-6 body here. Okay. Wow. So that's got to mean shock plus auspicious arrival. arrival. That's where my head would be going. Otherwise, I'm just snap blocking this vengeful tracker or disguise creature. Yeah. Got to be both of those. All right, well, in response to your block, so there's the auspicious arrival. So that'll keep the creature alive. In for two. And then is this a follow-up shock? It's just got to be. Otherwise, that attack is just so medium. Yeah, there you yeah. go. A little less medium now, more yeah. rare. Yes, yes, <laughs> at least uncommon. 
But I mean, like, look at how good that 3-6 was. It, it, yeah. it took two pieces of cardboard from Derek to be able to take it down. Now, of course, you get the clue back, but that was excellent. Okay. Nice. All right, Puzzle Knot getting sacrificed. There goes the tracker, so no extra reach from any yep. Ben Stark clue sacrifices happening. Yep, for two with the repeat offender. That is a free shock, though, because it was still an artifact sacrifice. You see the vengeful yeah. tracker trigger off sacking clues a lot more, but True. it does still trigger off those kind of things as well. Tap land, not what you want on turn four after you miss a couple <laughs> land drops, but Derek's not super far behind or anything yet. Like what was on top of the library, so. Probably another land. Now we'll see if that is a, one of the two dog walkers. So put on the job in the yard. If that is a dog walker, you can easily just flip it up and uh, get in there. Yep, disguise number two is going to hit the board instead. So I feel like Derek Davis is building to a grand finish here. Hopefully yep. this time taking into account that there is that fun of one of toxin analysis in the yeah. deck. Yeah, that card's tricky, that's for sure. And all right, already down to seven here. Derek Ooh, has wait. to be careful. You know, one of the cards Derek hasn't seen yet, and mm -hmm. it's, you know, one of the most iconic cards of all time. Lightning Helix would be yeah. so good at putting this game kind of on a switch here. Sure. Flip the narrative on its head here. Yep. But if not, you know, Derek is really far behind, and these Boros deck, as good as they are, and I totally agree, the best archetype yeah. in Murders at Karlov Manor, it still doesn't play from behind that well. No, you, know? you don't want to be on the back foot. No, here. definitely you, not. You want to go one, two, three, and just keep swinging. Yeah. You want to be walking the dog, not getting walked, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great way to put it, Corey. Thank you, thank you. All right, let's see if we can peep what's in hand there. For Derek Davis as he's shuffling up those cards. Still I saw an island, him. so okay. I'm going to guess that is one of our uh, yeah, two drops. Yeah, that's our Market Watch Phantom. Or I think <laughs> Crowd Control Warden. You know, there was there was three islands in there <laughs> as he had three very shiny foils. <laughs> oh, that's great. Big things here for Derek Davis. Yeah, and this is this is the turn of the game. This is the turning point. You know, this is something where if Ben has a great follow-up and Derek makes a little bit too aggressive of a play, something like that, then the game's just over. So this is wow. And speaking of an aggressive play, here we go. Just both Ooh, creatures cool. coming in. I like it. Turn things sideways. Think later. Shoot first. Wow. It's got to be very tempting for Ben to just take this and try to line up a way to attack back for lethal. I don't think Ben has any cards in hand, though. Seven. Yep. seven all. Man, in this situation, you've got to think, yeah, this bar stick is favored, but look at Ben's dark side of things. He has ways to increase the power on his board. He's got a disguise yep. creature there. We're not sure, sure what it is. But now we have a very suspicious repeat offender. <laughs> So that's six power. That you know, that's almost lethal. But the, this Crevot Haunch does gain life, and does leave critters behind for Derek Davis. Yep, true. And yeah, they are untapped. So that is probably what yeah. we're going for here. Is just a little bit of a chump blocker, gain three, or lightning helix and sack a clue. Those would be the two things that I would be thinking if I'm playing against Derek right now, uh, knowing the list. I like to think of the untapped dogs as the ones that aren't getting belly scratches. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> they want their dinner. Give. Fair. Here comes a very suspicious repeat offender. Wow, that's a very defensive attack here for Ben. Recognizing the onboard trick of putting two dogs into play, mm -hmm. chumping one of the three threes, gaining three, you know, maybe taking a total of one is just too bad. So I would assume if, if Ben even has any cards in hand that uh, they're not good. And I don't think he does, and played that mountain just because if he top decks another land, at least you could activate repeat offender three times. Ooh, okay, Ooh. this is going to get hairy now as Pyrotechnic Performer hits the board and hits Ben Stark in the face for three. We saw a Sanguine Savior underneath Disguise number two. Yep. And we're going to equip that and then flip it, and that's lethal. Yeah, because that's four power right there. Wow. <laughs> Wow, and that creature gains life too. Yeah. In another scenario. That's a wow, really, that really was cool. Sick, man. We were thinking about the dogs, and he's just like, no, I'm gonna hit you with a big old meat stick, basically. Yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. very, very cool. Yeah. Derek Davis, GG. Impressive stuff from Derek Davis, you know, and we saw Derek 
really do well in this first Pro Tour of the year last season yeah. and, you know, really knows Pioneer quite well. So getting a 2-0, maybe being able to play for that 3-0 next round. Yeah. Huge start for Derek Davis and big congratulations to him. That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. I love when there's always decisions to be made in yeah. these, you know, stereotypically aggressive decks. But yep. Derek Davis piloted that beautifully. And I cannot wait to see what happens in round number three with this deck. Yep, absolutely. There's just a lot of play to this limited format a lot, even with aggressive decks and stuff. So, yeah, I am a huge fan of this format. You know, I, I, I want to be drafting right now as well. I do, yeah. too. Should we just go? Yeah, let's yeah, go. Yeah, let's go. All right, cool. <laughs> Maria and Mani, uh, we'll take care of you guys off the break. We'll see you there.